What's going on guys and welcome to a new video. So a couple of months ago I did a video of showing you how to identify the problem if you're getting hundreds if not thousands of people onto your Shopify store but not converting them. I showed you how to identify where that process is breaking down and for the majority of the people it was on their Shopify store. So in this video I'm going to show you how to fix that problem. If you are someone who has been running ads to your Shopify store but you are not converting those people into customers then this is the video for you. So before we jump into the seven different points that I want to take you through, I want to pre-note this by saying that think of your Shopify store as like a first impression. When somebody lands on that product page of yours, within the first few seconds, they are going to decide in their mind whether they like your business or not. Think of it as like when you buy a new car. When you go to the showroom and the salesman comes over to introduce himself, if he's a bit scruffy and rude and doesn't give off a very good impression with you, then you're probably not going to buy a car from him and your website is exactly the same. Not only that, your website or the car salesman has a job to answer all of your questions. And if he can't answer all of the questions about the car or your Shopify store can't answer all of the questions about the product, ultimately it's going to lead to that person leaving without making a purchase. So in this video, I'm going to show you seven different things, seven different questions that you must answer. And if you do, it's going to increase your conversion rate. Number one, just to get the biggest and most obvious one out of the way, please don't leave the video. There will be some more valuable points coming up. But again, this is sometimes the hurdle that I see some Shopify stores fall at. So number one is price and variant. Have you got the correct spellings of your variants? For example, the most common mistake I see is the spelling of color. Are you using the American spelling for an American audience? Are you using a UK spelling for a UK audience? Number two, is your price too expensive or is it even too cheap? If you're selling a really awesome high quality products and you're selling it for a super cheap price, it's going to devalue your brand. The customer's going to think something is fishy, something don't quite smell right and leave your Shopify store to buy it elsewhere, sometimes even at a higher price. Consumers can be buying exactly the same product but want to pay that little bit extra because they think they'll be getting a better quality one when in reality it's just the same one. Number three, variant specific imagery. This is usually a built-in feature for most decent themes, but the amount of stores I review that when you click on the blue, it still shows a picture of the red. When you click on the green, it still shows a picture of the red. Or if you're buying a camera that comes with one battery, it shows an image of a camera with a tripod and four batteries. Your variants must match the images so your customers can see exactly what it is they're buying. If there's any confusion over this whatsoever, they were not going to make a purchase. Number four, are you running a discount? This is a 100% non-deniable fact people buy more or more likely to buy if there's a current discount. And last but certainly not least, have you got too many variants? Stick to less than six. If on your product page you have 25 different variants that the customer has to choose from, it's going to be messy and it's going to be overwhelming. Check out this graph of the paradox of choice. Customers want choice, just not too much. So there comes a point where by offering more choice, customers become less happy and therefore less likely to buy your product. Number two is imagery. If any of your images on your Shopify store look like these two here, then you need to have a massive rethink. Do not use supplier images as much as possible. Sometimes it is unavoidable, but in any case possible, try avoid using them. If you're left with no choice and you have to use them, make sure you remove the background, add your logo in one of the corners as like a watermark. Better yet still, order some samples, take your own photos. Even on an iPhone, you can take some pretty incredible and high detail photos with the right lighting. There's unlimited tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. So by having your own custom and original photos has two main benefits. Number one, platforms like Facebook reward original content. They don't want to be sending their users to the same type of Shopify stores every single time. If you're using the same supplier images as the next person selling the product, not only will your customer find it difficult to differentiate you from the next person, but Facebook will see your site as a very similar to one that the customer previously visited and didn't make a purchase on and therefore it's not really going to want to send users to your site either. Again, Google this. Go to the Facebook Ads Help Center. This is a fact. Facebook like original content. Number three is delivery information. So ask yourself a question now. When was the last time you ordered something without knowing when it will arrive? Or were you happy to pay for delivery? The chances are you've never ordered something without knowing when it's going to arrive. 
and free delivery is always better than having to pay for delivery. So these are two things that you must get right on your Shopify store. If you are having to hide your delivery information, you are doing something wrong. Never, ever, ever try and mislead the customer. This is gonna lead to big headaches later down the line. Build a legitimate business that you can sustain. Find better suppliers that can get your products to your customers faster. Same thing goes for returns and refund information. If I'm buying from a store, a website I've never come across before, I wanna know about this sort of thing. Make it blatantly obvious what this is. Again, if you're trying to hide this from your customers, then you are doing something wrong. You are misleading them, which is gonna to lead to unhappy customers, which is gonna to lead to getting banned on your advertising platforms. Number five is contact information. Customers want to know you are a real business and not a scam store. You have interrupted someone's day. If you are running social media ads, you have interrupted someone's day. And the chances are you won't be the first person to have done so either. And the chances on top of that, are they will have been scammed or ordered something from a Facebook ad before for it to never arrive. You need to prove to your customers that you are a real business. Provide a telephone number, an email address, a physical address, what your premises address is. Put opening hours on there so it looks like you have a real office. And if you have a company number, put one on there as well. The other advantage to this as well is by having contact information, it helps with SEO. On the right here is a screenshot taken from Twinkle and Tree. They actually go above and beyond when it comes to contact and they have a Zendesk help center. Number six is tracking information. Scam stores aren't likely to have tracking pages because they're not fulfilling their orders show your customers you're a legitimate business by letting them track their order it's super easy there's free options there's absolutely no reason why you can't have it on your own store on the right hand side is a screenshot taken from that very same twinkling tree website they are a proven seven figure drop shipper and this is what their track your order page looks like number seven then just to finish the video off this is something that everybody should be doing for their own products and this is product specific so take five minutes to write down every single objection slash question a consumer would have about your products. Write it down on a piece of paper, then on your product page, you have to answer every single one of those questions. If you leave just one of those questions unanswered, then that will harm your conversion rate. If your consumers have any excuse whatsoever not to buy your product, that will be enough to make them leave your site and never come back. So for example, for a product like this, it's a garden light. I took a couple of minutes to go through the questions and things like that, that people would be thinking about this product. So number one is how long does it take to charge? People need to know that. If it takes seven days to charge, people aren't gonna buy the product. So you need that information on there. Number two, how does it start stand up? Does it have a pointy end that needs to go into grass? It needs to go into soil or does it come with a stand so I can put it on a patio? I want to know where I can put this product once I've bought it. Number three, is it waterproof? It's going to go outside in my garden so I need to know if it's waterproof or not. It sounds blaringly obvious. Why would anyone make a garden light that isn't waterproof but it's information that if you do not have it on there leaves an unanswered question. Number four, how long does it last? Are you willing to put a guarantee to that? I want to know that if I'm buying a product that's going to go outside and endure the UK weather. I want to know if it's going to last one winter or two winters or three winters, so on and so forth. Once it's fully charged up, is it going to light up my garden all night? Is it going to be 10 minutes? Is it going to be an hour? Make sure you have all of the information on there. Next is what materials is it made out of? If I'm very environmentally friendly, I might not want a plastic light in my garden. Is it made out of metal to help with that kind of rustic appearance and style? Again, that will also contribute to how weatherproof it is or how long it's gonna last for and also contributes towards the price. A metal product takes more craftsmanship and therefore is a more higher quality and expensive product. Next, how is it powered? Is this plugged into the mains? Is it purely solar powered? Is it battery powered? Is it rechargeable batteries? How big is it? Is this thing this big or is it this big? I wanna know because when I put it in my garden, I wanna know whether it will fit or whether it's actually large enough to stand out and create the effects that I'm looking for. And lastly, what sort of light functions does this product have? Is there a switch that goes between a solid light and a flickering light? Or is it just solid or is it just flickering? These are all the sorts of questions that a consumer subconsciously is gonna have about a product. And like I said, if you leave just one of these unanswered, then you greatly increase the risk of them leaving your site, never to come back and never to make that purchase. And with that being said then guys, that is the video. They're the points I wanted to go through with you. Make sure you go through every single one of these points and plug them into your store. Make sure you answer every single 
single one of these questions for your products and trust me, it will make a difference to your success. Any comments, questions, video suggestions, anything at all I can help you with, I read every single comment on my YouTube videos, so just post it down below and I will get back to you. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video on Friday.